I've been a bit of a knit top sewing spree lately. So I've been a bunch of knit tops, including the ones I'm wearing here. And so in today's video, I want to show you all the things I've made lately and also give you plenty of tips when it comes to sewing with knits, especially tops. Those little things that I have personally found made a huge difference and really taking my sewing to the next level. I do love knit tops that comes with some type of innovative detailing. So I'm honestly not all that keen on just making simple t-shirts because to me, even though they're wonderful to wear, they don't really provide as much of a sewing challenge. So a theme that will run through all the makes that I will show you today is the fact that they all have some really clever details that makes the end garment to me a bit more fun and also gives me a bit more of a sewing challenge. So this was a first for me. So we're going to take a look at the small things that makes this pattern really interesting. The sleeves are actually pleated. So you basically do very similar like you would have done like a kick pleat on a skirt, for instance. So it's basically just a straight line that you sew here and then you leave a gap and let the sleeves kind of expand from there. Um, the good thing about this pattern is that it came with illustrated sewing instructions, but of course, because I am sometimes have a bit of a big too much belief in my own abilities, I kind of misread the instructions for the pleats, uh, so I actually did something a bit wrong in the beginning, so they didn't turn out 100%, but I don't really think you will notice. Uh, so, and they also use another unusual detail for knits, which is that inside here, it's actually a facing, yeah. So that is how you finish this sleeve. So you, you attach, you, do, you sew the kick pleats, you attach, the facing, fold it upwards, and then you stitch over here. Here I use the cover stitch machine. So this little detail adds plenty of volume to the finished garment. And another thing that this top has is a gathered sleeve or puff sleeves, which also to me really gives the top a lot of really nice volume. So uh, I actually can really recommend this pattern if statement sleeve are your things. If it's not, then probably this pattern is probably not your jam because yeah, the sleeves definitely take up some space. So for now I'm going to give you a few tips that I find really useful. So as you can see here, the neckband of this top is made with the same fabric as the bodies. And rib knits are of course usually easier to sew a neckband because it just, the way it stretches and shapes, it has much nicer properties to work with. But of course, many of us do like to use the same fabric. And I'm sure many of you, as including myself, has had the struggle of the fact that getting this neckband to lie flat and not be like um, wobbly and standing up and stuff like that. I mean, raise your hands if you have experienced this. I, I've done that plenty of times. So I just want to give you a quick idea on what to think about when you want to use self fabric rather than ribbon it for the neckband. First of all, it's very important that you do a really narrow neckband because this is jersey. It's not a double knit, it's not a ribbon knit, which means that it doesn't have the same type of capability to expand uh, and, and also lie flat because if you do a ribbon knit, you know, if you stretch that out like this, you know, it will kind of bend but still keep intact at the curve, but this will not behave the same way. So. The, the more narrow you can make the neck, neck band, the more likely you, you will be happy with the result. If you go and look into ready to wear, for instance, and look in how they do neck bands using stretch jersey, you will see that they are, tend to be quite narrow. So in this case, I would say that the finished neck band is probably about 1.5 centimeters at the most, which is roughly, I think, five, eight inches. Uh, I hope that made that conversion right. So it's quite narrow and of course I use seam allowance as well, but the finished neckband folded is somewhere around that, not much more than one centimeter, which is probably the, the number one thing. And the second thing is that if you your pattern has a rib knit neckband pattern piece that will be drafted uh, with more negative ease. So it might be like 75% of the uh, the actual neckline distance or the uh, the rib knit, but when you're using this type of stretch jersey, which definitely stretch because it has lycra in it, it will not stretch as much. So what you need to consider is the fact that you will probably have to make the pattern piece slightly longer. I would say aim around 85% uh, somewhere in that uh, region of the distance of the neckline, and so you have to shrink it to so it's basically around. 
85% of the distance here. I hope I'm, make, I'm making sense now. Uh, I also have a very extensive blog post on my website, thelastdish.com, where I go through all the things I talk about now in much more detail. So I highly recommend that you check that out, which is a really more thorough explanation of all the things I'm trying to give you like a brief idea of in this video. So when you're sewing neck bands, regardless if they're made of rib knit or self fabric in this case, you would like to usually to stitch the neck band down. So you want to top stitch around over the seam allowance because that keeps the seam allowance nice and flat and the neck band will not flip back and forth. So it's a good thing. But especially uh, in this area on the one side where you both have the seam allowance of the neck band and the shoulder seam allowance. And of course also some shoulder uh, reinforcement to keep the shoulders seams in check. Um, it's gonna be a bumpy ride for the sewing machine or the cover stitch regardless of the tool you're using. So you might end up with problems with feeding and skip stitches. So what I like to do, I have a couple of <laughs> tips up my sleeves or tricks up my sleeve. And the first of all is that I do not start stitching on the top of the, the bump area here because I find that the sewing machine or the cover stitch is usually gonna have some initial struggles there. So what I do instead is that I start sewing about roughly about one and a half centimeters, like five, eight inches or a little bit more than that um, in on the back piece so that the sewing machine well, the presser foot of the sewing machine will have a flat surface to work with and then I stitch all the way around and finish off on the back. Don't worry, it won't show. Because uh, if you sew it nicely and just overlap and secure, you know, it, it will, will not be any like visible thing that you have done. So I'm very personally, I'm very comfortable uh, with doing this. And also if you check a lot of garments that are made professionally, you will also see that the seam is actually starting slightly in on the the back piece and another trick that i like to utilize when it comes to uh getting rid of that bulkiness around that area just for sewing in general is that i like to bring out my rubber mallet which is a really wonderful little tool to have in your sewing toolkit because what i do is basically i just hammer down all the seams that intersect here and just doom, 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 like this and it doesn't ruin the fabric because you know the, the rubber mallet is made of rubber so it's very gentle actually i of course do it at your own risk I, I cannot guarantee it will work for everyone but to me personally it's been very useful so i just do that and again if you are having problems with feeding regardless if you're sewing knits or woven fabrics uh, a rubber mallet will be your friend to just flatten out that that intersection where a lot of seams are meeting and you might have trouble for instance top stitching jeans again bring out that hammer and that would probably be quite helpful. Uh, my third tip for uh, avoiding or at least reducing the amount of bulk around the neckline area is that you, when you're joining the neck band as a circle before you attached it you will have of course one seam and I like to actually move that particular seam again slightly towards the back so it actually it doesn't align with the shoulder seam I just move it a little bit, bit to the back just again, so what I like to do is to make sure that the sewing machine will be off to a good start when it comes to uh, top stitching this bulk area. So these are my three tips for avoiding bulkiness around the neckband area. First of all, uh, hammer down the seams with a rubber mallet. Secondly, move the seam allowance to the neckband slightly towards the back. And thirdly, start top stitching not over that bulky section if you have all these uh, seams intersecting instead start sewing slightly on the back where the presser foot is allowed to lie flat from the start so it doesn't have to tilt up and down because that of course will result usually in some skip stitches or just uneven feeding. This is actually a pattern that I drafted myself and a fun backstory is that it's actually based on a pattern that I used many many years ago. It's around 10 years ago and even more. Uh, for a while I used to sew and sell clothes. Uh, so I made this pattern back then and it actually turned out to be my best selling style because it's such a versatile and also very flattering 
I needed to wear. So the pattern is quite simple, but it has some nice detail. First of all, there's a back yoke and a front yoke. And I also have like gathers around the bust area. And back then I used to do it with um, like a Peter Pan color when I used to sell the clothes. Uh, but it's basically a pattern that you can pretty much turn into anything. So in this case, I added uh, this tie, like a passebow blouse, I think it's called in English, right? We call it like almost like a um, blouse with ties. It's not as <laughs> innovative in Swedish, but, but it's very simple uh, like this. So you can wear them like this, like a bow, or maybe you can tie it around like a tie. Then what I do is I just add a little bit of a facing piece just here. Uh, for the opening. Honestly, I should have done that a bit more narrow, but I was actually testing out this. I haven't done anything like this uh, before, I think. So it's very easy. You see, it's just one long rectangular piece. There is a facing here, just six tag, a little bit here. Uh, and then I just have this really nice long tie that you can pretty much make uh, any type of style. So it's really fun, it's really easy. So for the sleeves, they are long sleeves, so they are perfect for fall. And just to make the sleeves a little bit more interesting, which is also the original style of this pattern, there are uh, just some small gathers around the, the head of the sleeve. I don't go overboard with puffs on this one, but just a nice flare, because the good thing about that is it also adds some really nice volume. And then I finish it off with a little cuff like this. So let's talk about a few things that I want to share with you when it comes to constructing this blouse that could be useful to know. First of all, I like to stabilize my shoulder seams using clear elastic. And now you might wonder, oh, why do I need to stabilize shoulder seam on knits? Well, I know many of you already know that, but in case you aren't familiar with this idea, it's the fact that because you're using a lot of stretchy fabrics, um, and they also cut slightly on the diagonal, right, when you're sewing a shoulder seam. So what happens is that very often when you're sewing it together, especially if you're using a regular sewing machine, the this shoulder will expand and it won't expand and pop back, it will just expand. So, which is why it's really important to stabilize it in some capacity in most knits if you're using stretchy knits. So, the good news is that I've done an entire video on this particular topic where I show, I think, about four or five different ways of doing this. And if you have a surgery or a sewing machine, what type of materials you like to use. I like to use clear elastic because clear elastic is as narrow as a regular seam allowance, like an overlock seam allowance around five millimeters, uh, which is about one quarter of an inch. So it's perfect because it's hidden inside the seam allowance. So I am a big fan of that, but I also show lots of other options in that video. So I'm not saying you have to do that, but I'm a big fan on knits. I do think you should try this method out if you haven't already. And that is the good thing about the surgery is that uh, it has a differential feed, uh, which regulates the the speed of the feed dog. So if you crank it up all the way to two, which I think is normally the high number, uh, that means you will have a gathering effect because it speeds up the front uh, feed dogs uh, moving faster. So just by doing that, it will create some gathers. And if you really want to get a lot of gathers, you can also, if your surgery has um, need a manual needle tension. If you crank that up to max, you're gonna have a lot of gathers, and they're they're so nice and even. So this is a long-winded way of me of telling you that the quickest way to create gathers, honestly, on knits, if you have a surgery, is to use either just a differential feed or a combination of the needle tension and the differential feed, and perhaps even just a needle tension. Um, so what I've did on this particular top is that I made the gathers both here at the front joke and the uh, gathers here at the um, sleeve head here. Those are all done just using the serger. So it was really quick, just takes a couple of minutes basically. So I love that. And you can also regulate it by pulling the needles to thread strands as well. So of course you can do it in many other ways as well. And by the way, speaking of gathers, <laughs> again, I do have a blog post about that too. So you can hop over to my website, thelastish.com, to read a really extensive uh, guide to how to sew gathers on knit fabrics. I show many different methods there, regardless if you have a sewing machine or a serger. So don't worry if you don't have a serger and you want to create gathers on knits. There are lots of other ways of doing that. It doesn't require 
a surder and I show all this in that blog post. But yeah, it's a really nice, um, a really nice feature to have if you have a surder. And this is my latest make. This is from Boda Style again, but it's not from the magazine. It's actually from their envelope uh, selection. Really nice pattern. What I love about this particular twist top is the fact the twist here is so beautifully constructed. Now I can get really nerdy when it comes to twist top because I do like to sew them because they don't just look really cool. They also provide a nice sewing challenge because you really have to you know, use your brain, you know, like expanding your brain to figuring out the construction because it definitely challenged, at least me, a bit more than a regular sewing pattern. Uh, and actually, even though I made this before, I, I still had to like um, think quite a lot before I actually realized how to construct this. Once you realize it, it's easy, but until that point, it's, it's difficult. So, uh, the thing that makes this twist up, I think, so nice is probably the biggest drawback of this pattern too, is the fact that it has a, a center front seam running all the way, which is how this very intricate construction is uh, possible. What I would do, which I've done with both the times I've made this pattern, is that I haven't used a um, serger overlock or a sewing machine overlock for this stitch. Instead, I used narrow zigzag stitch. Now narrow zigzag stitch I think is actually quite underutilized when it comes to uh, sewing machine stitches for knits. It's actually really useful to just use a narrow zigzag stitch on your regular sewing machine to sew together this because if, you, if I used like an overlock seam uh, I would not be able to press the seam allowance open first of all which means that I would have a, like a big bulky <laughs> like strip of fabric lace running through over my stomach area, which can be, I guess, not like a great, uh, it will be a little bit annoying chafing and stuff like that. So instead I, I used a narrow zigzag and I actually treated it like I would have done with the Volvo. So I actually pressed the seam allowance open. And in this case, it worked really well. Last time I used um, a wool jersey and it worked really well for that as well. So you have to try and see if you're your chosen fabric will handle being pressed open and stay pressed open, but I would definitely recommend that you give that narrow zigzag stitch a try because it does have some stretch, but because the points of the zigzag won't be as pronounced, it won't be that gapping situation. So it would more look like a straight stitch in that sense when you're like pulling it apart, it looks really flat. So that is my number one tip when it comes to if you're having like tricky seams and you don't know how to do them on a serger or uh, using a sewing machine overlock stitch i do recommend that you give the narrow zigzag stitch a try so these were my long way of showing you my latest make so it ended up perhaps more more about uh all the things you can do when it comes to sewing knits and some ideas i hope that you found this useful as i said i've done so many resources on these topic already so if you go to the description section, you will find all the things I mentioned here and the reference and the pattern numbers and everything. And I really hope that you enjoyed this video. And I'm also looking forward to share some more makes in the future and of course some more sewing tips. Sit safe and I'll see you soon. Bye bye.